Yo, what is up? Welcome back to another live stream here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be looking at creating fine art photography inside of On One Photo Raw. Now, I do have to apologize. I'm a little stuffy and, and congested, not because I have a cold, but last week I had surgery, which is why there was no live stream and it was on my sinuses. Uh, my body is still recovering from that, but uh, here we are. We're going to drive on. And this is also the reason why I don't have a haircut. I have been uh, kind of just licking my wounds for the past week and all that fun stuff. So uh, like always, if you have comments or questions, leave them in the comment section. If you're watching this on the replay, then by all means, uh, leave comments and I do get back to those. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Uh, I do have a few announcements, and I'm going to move over to the computer. There we are. So, as you can see here, the new Free Will Photos website has been launched. All right, freewillphotos.com. You can find that in the description box below. Uh, all of that information is readily available for you. So, please come over to the website, check it out. There's going to be some really cool things added on here. One of those things is going to be courses. Wow, I really apologize, guys. But uh, one of those things is going to be courses, all right? Some free, some paid. But these are all going to be housed here on the website. Uh, the other thing is all the downloads that you have been getting through uh, Google Drive or via email or anything like that. Those are going to be inside the members area, which if they're free right now, they're still going to be free, but there will be some paid, uh, not plugins, um, paid presets, textures, all those things. All right. And then uh, last but not least, there is a blog on here. All right. And this blog is going to be a lot of different things, a lot of different things. I won't really go into too much of what that is. Uh, however, on the uh, blog right now, I have something known as the 15 minute drill. I'm going to show you where that's located. So if you hover over portfolio and you click on 15 minute drill. Oh, man. It's really annoying. If you ever had sinus surgery, shout it out in the comment section. Uh, maybe you you know what I'm going through. Uh, it is, it's tough. But if you again, if you hover over portfolio, you can click on 15 minute drill. All right. And then down here where it says, how do you get more familiar with your camera? This was the first week of the 15 minute drill. This is something that I'm doing every day. I take 15 minutes and I just photograph. doesn't matter what it is. The subjects are really irrelevant. Um, and we're going to take a look at some of those photos that I took this week uh, with our Create a Fine Art photo today. But um, you, you definitely want to check this out. You can click on it and scroll down. You can see the photos that I took. Again, we're going to take another look at these. I even give you the settings, the camera, the lens. Not that that matters as much, but so you can kind of get the idea of, okay, this focal length, I can do this. <sighs> oh, man, this is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, but we're going to keep driving on. And, of course, you can always uh, leave comments on here, things of that sort, read through uh, whatever my weekly thing is. Um, but there's going to be more information. So... You can go ahead and uh, sign in here. It's going to let you use whatever form of login that you want. Completely free to do, by the way. So you're not going to be charged for anything to sign up. All right. Now, what I do want to uh, remind everyone of is the Flickr group. Yes, there's still a Flickr group. That is in the show notes or the description box below as well. So please... Go ahead and take a look at that. Um, come over, join us in the uh, the the Flickr group. Drop some photos in here. Let's have conversations. Completely free to do. Uh, and I think it'll be a good spot for us to kind of hang out. Now, 
last place that I want to go to today is Pinterest. And I actually have a board for us. So we're going to go to that board. Uh, there it is. All right. So now we're transitioning a little bit into the fine art section of the live stream. Now that we got some of the, uh, the notes and, you know, things like that out of the way. Man, I'm sorry. It is really, really hard to uh, talk and have all this congestion. And trust me, I've been trying to flush it out for some days. It's a challenge. All right. With that being said, fine art photography. Extremely, extremely subjective topic. All right. I don't know of any more subjective topic that is available in photography than fine art. And the reason for that is because as an artist, you have to come up with a vision, right? And not all of us have the same vision. And as the viewer, you also have to have a interested vision as the artist, right? <laughs> There's a photographer, I can't remember the, the photographer's name, but there was a saying that uh, there's two people when you look at a photograph, the photographer and the viewer. Now, there could be lots of viewers, but it's really just a uh, what the photographer is trying to convey to the viewer. And not all the viewers are going to see the same things, right? Uh, some people focus in on colors. Some people can't see colors the same way as others can. So then they focus in on uh, texture. They focus in on shape, things of that sort. All right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about composition later today uh, in this because that does play a big part into fine art photography. But one of the things that I wanted to show here is you have to start with some sort of vision. And I think that comes with building a mood board. Now, <laughs> I'm not really big into mood boards, but when it comes to photography as a whole, I think that it's important for us to at least have an idea of where we're trying to end up. And that's where these mood boards really come in. Uh, so some of the images here, they inspired me to build the image that I made, uh, you know, that you see it on the thumbnail, but along with some other images that I made this week. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right. So moral of the story, mood boards, you can come to Pinterest, you can find whatever you're looking for, put them on a pin, and then just have that up while you're working on your photo. Okay. Uh, if you can, if not, just look at it, say, Oh, you know what? I like how soft this, this flower looks, right? This is a very soft image. I would consider this to be a fine art look. And, you know, you can click on something that you like and then find uh, more things that are similar to it. And before you know it, you have a long term mood board. All right. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And here we are in on one photo raw now. Give me one second. Okay, some distracting stuff on my second monitor. So, already said that it's a very subjective field to get into uh, and to start with some form of intent. What is the intent that you are looking for? All right, well, there's a few different things that I think all of us uh, would agree that we should look for. That's gonna be uh, color, so is this going to be in color or is this going to be monochrome or black and white or some sort of sepia tone? Like, what do you want to end with? The next one is going to be, do you want this to be a matte finish or do you want this to be something a little bit more contrasty and saturated? Uh, or do you want this to have some sort of a color pop, right? These are all things that we need to pay attention to in our editing workflow, so to speak, uh, because those are going to really pay dividends when it comes down to it. 
As you see in front of you, I have a few images that I have been working on this week. Um, and all of these are on the Flickr account. Most of these are on the blog. So if you want to go take a look at these, you can absolutely do so by going to either of those locations, um, which are linked in the description box below. So you'll be able to get there. But all of these are from my 15 minute drill that I've been doing this week. Now, this is one of my favorite photos that I got this week. And it's it's actually quite simple, right? Um, using some fairly you know simple gear, but I won't talk about the gear because that's not as important as what was going through my mind as I was making this photo, all right? So as you know, I'm still recovering and you can hear that, you know, I, I'm recovering from surgery and all this mucus, I don't move around as much. Um, and I also don't talk as much as I'm talking right now. So this is even more challenging. Uh, anyway, I said, you know what, I'm going to sit outside on my front porch, bandaged, nosed and everything. And there's this bush uh, outside on that sits off to the left side of our porch. And I was out probably around, I don't know, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and there was these really nice orange tones that were coming through on on the plant here. All right. Uh, so this is the original. And this doesn't do it any justice because I was hand holding, by the way, I was hand holding my camera. Uh, I needed my shutter speed to be a little bit faster uh, because I didn't want to have a blurry image. So I went ahead and uh, put my shutter speed up to one three twentieth of a second, whatever. All right. And. I did some base exposures here, right? Nothing over the top crazy. I think I actually hit AI auto since this auto slider is pulled down. And then I went through and did some uh, individual edits here, all right? Individual uh, edits. Going through all of those edits, I said, okay, now I'm ready to actually turn this into something. And that's where we get to the effects tab. Now, I just throw a border on everything now for some reason. I, I like the borders. Let me know in the comment section. Do you like using borders on your images? Uh, yes, no, maybe so. I thought the border added something. Uh, but the very first thing here is I was drawn by the color, right? So I started working with my colors instantly, all right? Now, I have a preset that I use for my Canon EOS R6 to get the base colors. And I'm just going to show you the work up here. So we went from the base image, which is here with the basic edits, all right? Base image, basic edits, that's all that's on here. And then I said, okay, I need to increase my tone a little bit more. How do I do that? Well... I'm going to pull down on my blacks because I like more contrasty images. This is going to be subjective, whatever you choose. Uh, and it changes by the image, by the way. So not all of this is going to remain the same. This is just where I like to start. Uh, and then I open up some shadows, uh, expose it just to make it a little bit brighter since I am darkening the photo. And I think I even increase the details just a little bit to, to get a little bit more crispiness. <laughs> Then I go into my color adjustment, all right? This is my opportunity to make any color adjustments that I think I was missing in the original image to get it back to what I was seeing with my eye. Uh, and then also making those artistic choices, uh, which I use some saturation and some vibrance because over here on the... Uh, develop tab it likes to take away some of that and I thought you know that's fine I'll just go ahead and add it in here and if it begins to get too crazy in certain areas I can just use a mask so 
that was my thought process on that. And, you know, going through the channels, I don't think I did much of anything on the individual channels. This is, again, a preset. So I add this to all of my R6 or most of my R6 photos. Uh, and then I come in and if I'm like, you know, I really want to work on the greens, then I already have it ready to go with the amount of saturation and vibrance that I prefer to have in an image. Uh, again, preference, very subjective. Uh, and this is just the way that I do what I do. All right. Uh, but I'm curious to hear, you know, how do you like to edit your photos? Uh, do you build up or do you just start throwing stuff? Do you start with a preset? Which again, this is a preset. Uh, I'm working on fine art photography presets uh, right now. So my very first thing was, okay, I want to do something fine art and, and artsy. I'm going to go ahead and throw an antique filter on there. And this is what I got. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this, right? So I tried pulling this down and then I was like, well, that gets lost. You know, like it's there, but it doesn't look the way that I want, but maybe that could work. And then I started messing around with some of the other stuff and I just couldn't find anything that I like. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to keep investing time in that. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a curve on here because I know that I wanted something that was a little faded. And one of my favorite ways of fading an image so much so that I have a preset FW, FWP fade one is by pulling up on the blacks putting a uh, two uh, nodes in the shadows and then pulling down on my whites. That's the way that I like to fade my images. So I went ahead and I did that. Uh, I didn't do anything else in these channels. All I did was this is literally just for the fading effect, right? It goes from this super dark pump contrast uh, photo to something a little bit more matte finished. And then I said, okay, now I need to add in the, the information that I was seeing. So that's where the sun flare came in. And the sun flare itself, if you haven't played with this particular feature in On One, it is a very, very unique tool, all right? I really enjoy the sun flare feature. So I went ahead and I said, okay, you know what? I like the sun flare. Uh, I like what it's doing and I messed around with some of the settings here brought the brightness down so it wasn't so bright uh, but that was pretty much it now I said okay well I'm ready to finish the photo so I went ahead and I went with the border so those are the effects that I use to make this particular image all right now you you're gonna use whatever effects that you want to use. And as an artist, I can't really tell you which effects you should be using. However, what I will offer to you is when you choose an effect, it should have a purpose for what it is that you're trying to accomplish, right? I added in the basic tone curve because I wanted this to be a little bit more dark, right? Because if I take this off, the image becomes more flat. It's not as much contrast in there. And as you can see, I did not use dynamic contrast. All right. Did not use dynamic contrast in, in this particular edit. Excuse me for a second. Okay, sorry, had to blow my nose and uh, hopefully get some of that, that stuff out of there. Okay, so 
uh, have an idea of what it is that you want to accomplish by adding the effect. Now, you could obviously just add an effect, see if it works, and then get rid of it. That's one of the beauties of, of working with on one. Uh, what I did not do with this particular photo, uh, and we'll take a look at another one where I kind of did some more work, is I didn't selectively edit in areas that I could have. Um, I didn't feel like I needed to. Uh, I, I feel like everything... You see the subject of this photo. Uh, there's some nice interest over here. More context with this plant down here. You can tell that this is a bush of some sort. Uh, it, it didn't seem like it needed more because this is dark. It was a very simple composition is really what I'm getting at. So if I were to go to the crop tool, I did not crop this image at all. However... If I wanted to, and you know, this is this is where you have to make your artistic choices. Uh, composition really does matter, all right? Now, I cropped in quite a bit here, uh, and I think if I were to crop this, this would be the crop that I go with, right? And to me, this is a completely different image. One because of the crop, but two. Uh, it's way more intimate on this leaf than I think I would want it to be. So that's why I decided not to crop it. Uh, because when I did, it just didn't work out for me. All right. I think that this is the better image personally. Uh, but that's just me. And I think it works. Now. Let's go ahead and add in. <clears throat> now, this is where you can get a little bit more creative, right? I can take the border off of this one. And I can come up here. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. I'll delete this one. We're going to add a second layer because I have a version of this photo that is in black and white. And as you can see, I took a bunch of photos this week. Got all kinds of photos in here. Here we go. Add as layer. So this is going to come in over the top <clears throat> and Hopefully, I can get rid of the border. Yep. All right. And now, all I'm going to do is fade this in, right? And this is this is a way that you can kind of get your artistic uh, look, right? I can paint some there. Paint some here. Maybe I want that to come in. Uh... Let's lower the opacity, paint a little bit there, maybe a little bit here. And, you know, this is, again, just a different way of editing and creating something artistic. And then I can throw a border on it and someone can look at this and be like, that's that's interesting right the the whole purpose i think of fine art photography and you know i'm no genius at fine art photography is to draw a viewer in long enough to really explore the image and to appreciate the work that the artist the photographer put into that said image that is what I think the purpose of fine art photography is. And obviously decoration. I think that a lot of people buy fine art photography for decoration. All right. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and hit done on this. And we'll leave that to its own races. And then 
and this is going to save the on photo and we'll go to another image here in a little bit and I really do apologize for all of the sniffles you know it's not easy with my nose the way that it is right now but hopefully by next week it will be uh, cleared up and yeah we'll be good to go good to go wow this is taking a little while to uh, to render here but at this moment, if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. Uh, this would be a great time to ask any questions that are related towards anything in online, really. Uh, if there's something that you would like to see me produce a video on, then let me know in the comment section because that's always helpful uh, for you to let me know. <laughs> normally doesn't take this long I don't know what's going on yeah okay let's quit on one I'm not worried about saving that particular thing so maybe need to run a force quit That's weird. Okay. Any day now. You know, and this is a M1 Mac Mini. Guess I got some updates I need to run, but still, shouldn't be this slow. All right, we got that quit. Let's just go ahead and reopen on one so we can get back on track. <laughs> here I just want all my favorite photos out of this bunch 15 minute challenge that good now there we go all right so looks like it tried to make the on photo right here uh, we're not gonna mess with that so the next thing that we'll look at where I guess I, I did a little bit of extra work is this photo right here now this is an on photo and I did send this into silver effects and then I just blended the black and white with the original to get this color uh, color vibe like I, I feel like this is just something you know it would be a great decoration or decoration great decor uh, 
And so I said, hey, you know what? Let's just go ahead and uh, blend a black and white photo with a color photo. And this is just a parking meter downtown in my city. Uh, nothing crazy, right? Went on a photo walk yesterday as my daughter was in art class or whatever she was in. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go and take photos of things that I would never really take photos of, right? Uh, parking meters, probably on my list of, I would probably never photograph that. Now, here is the edit that I made on the image before I sent it to uh, Silver Effects Pro. And I tried to do a black and white adjustment here. Uh, this, and then actually I ended up resetting it and said, you know what, I'm just going to do a basic edit, send it to Silver Effects. And so then this is what I ended up with. I'll show you that by itself. So this is the final product out of Silver Effects. And then of course I threw a border on because I'm just messing around with borders. But this is the final look that I got out of Silver Effects. And I dodged here, or I'm sorry, I burned here. I did a dodge there. Now, these aren't things that you would pick up on by just looking at it and saying, oh, yeah, he did that. Uh, and that's what I think is cool about fine art, right? Uh, for the person who has the eye to look into those things and say, OK, you know, there's something about this that really compels me to look further into the photo. Uh, something's unique about it. Then, you know, those are those are the reasons why I think fine art is so much fun to create, produce and, you know, just put out into the world. So uh, this again is my Silver Effects Pro final render. And then I just brought it down to about 80 percent is what looked right to me <laughs> to actually make a colored image, but have a nice silver undertone. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can process this, right? Uh, I could leave this fully black and white, and then I could just throw maybe a photo filter. Uh, there it is. Throw a photo filter on here. Click the, uh, the little color uh, option. And, you know, you can just go to town with whatever color you want to cast over the image here uh, and then you know you can polarize it to make it more contrasty so if I wanted to make something like a sepia maybe a darker orange something like that and then you can just crank the amount until you get to the desired location right there's just so many things that you can do uh, that you know I'm not going to be able to cover in just one live stream or, or really probably ever. Uh, and I could blend the opacity of that into the final image. So I can get a lot of different looks. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do something like a, we'll do something like this, right? Where, and then I'll copy that. Add in another photo filter. We're gonna do like a uh, a till and orange. So opposite of that would have been somewhere maybe in this ballpark. We'll say that that it's here. It could be whatever you want. I'm doing this just to give you an idea. Uh, and now we have something that could be more uh, of what you're looking for. And if you ever want to change that. All you have to do is come back to the the mask here and just rotate the uh, the mask option. You know, we can click and drag, make it way more subtle. Something like this that could be cool. Uh, maybe you'll say, okay, well, I want to make it three tones. So then we paste this on here and then we will invert it hit the mask rotate pull this up 
right? So now we just have the blue in the corner here. Crank up the amount. You can add in even another uh, photo filter. And this time, maybe we wanna go with something a little bit more red, right? And we want it to be really red like that. Then we'll just grab a uh, ellipse or whatever this is. Sorry. We'll make that edges so that way it's only on the inside here. And, you know, you could do all kinds of stuff, right? So now I have three colors in my image. This probably is not something that's cool, but you you have a, uh, what I'm trying to do is just show you, there are ways for you to spice up your images to make them a little bit more uh, artistic, so to speak. Uh, and thinking outside of the box, right? Maybe you you want this to be a certain color. Well, if you have Photo Raw 2021, you can use the color uh, replace color tool. And I'll turn off all of these. And I guess I need to get to a color version of the image. So let me click here, turn that off. And then we'll add a replace color on this one. All right. So target this color right here. And as you can see, it went into the sidewalk. So you'll have to mask that a little bit. But I can make it darker and just run the gamut of colors. And what's cool is you can choose any color under the sun. So... We can do something maybe like that. Uh, I'll increase the range just a little bit more. <laughs> right. And we'll come to the sliders, RGB sliders, just so I can get the hex code. <laughs> and we will add another filter, another replace color. Click the picker. Click down at the bottom, click the selection tool, paste in the color that we want, hit enter. And so that way we're, we're starting to get those colors on the entire uh, device here. All right. I know I went a little quick there, but now that I have that, you know, we got this green uh, <laughs> parking meter, I can go ahead and click on my mask and oh, I gotta let me start on the bottom one first because this is where most of the yeah there we go so we'll just go ahead and mask away everywhere we we don't want to see this effect right Wherever this effect can go away, we'll send it away. And then we can do Command R to get our perfect brush. We'll come around the edge of this particular um, device, the parking meter. And I'm not going to do a perfect mask, but you know, obviously you're going to need to take some time uh, and you could even use the, if you're in on one photo raw 2022, you can use the line masking tool to mask out your subject here and then really hone in on what it is that you want to target. Right. Uh, the the replace color. Great, great tool. All right. Then we'll just copy this mask. Come back over here. Well. Come back over here, open that, paste it. And so that way we're preserving as much in this space. But as you can see, now I have a green meter and 
if I had a better mask, I would be able to really isolate this from the background, uh, even throw a blur behind it. Let's see. We could add maybe a, a blur, throw in the mask, invert it. <laughs> That's working pretty decent for, you know, a very quick mask. And now, you know, that could be something that is very uh, fine artish. I don't know. This might get into more of the uh, conceptual art, uh, but something that is worthwhile nonetheless. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cancel that because I don't want any of these changes uh, to be made to that image because I like the way that the image looked. Now, one of my favorite images this week is this Batman. And this will be the last one that we cover in today's live stream. This Batman, man, my nose, is really, really cool. Here's the original image. It was in color. I have this blue light in my room. Uh, I don't know. Now nah, you can't see it in the video, but I have a blue light in my room, and uh, the I wanted him to look like he was on a building, and uh, the helicopter was shining its light down at him. So I had a continuous light off to the left here, and it was casting, you know, obviously on the uh, left side. And then putting his right side in shadow, it's Batman, it's looking mysterious. Like, this is what I was thinking through my 15-minute drill. This is why I encourage everyone to uh, have a 15-minute drill. And I said, okay, well, it's Batman, Lego Batman. So why not make it a little bit more mysterious? Let's go ahead and make this a black and white image. So I did some basic adjustments, as you can see. And this time, instead of going to silver effects, I just did my black and white adjustment here inside of on one. And I don't think I actually did any of the adjustments overall. Uh, I didn't do anything except for make it black and white. So after the base adjustment, uh, you'll see why this is green here in a second. All I did was throw the black and white adjustment on and left it alone. That's just the default settings. Then I came into my curve. And I made my curve uh, using my faded. No, oh, no. So I started with the faded and then I decided to make a completely different fade. Right. So this just gives it a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. Mystery. And then I just brought the opacity of that down. <laughs> then I said, okay, I need some contrast in this image. So I went ahead and threw in some contrast to help just with the, the chiseling uh, of the overall image. And then I said, okay, I need to magnify this particular sunlight. So I used a sun flare. Uh, the base default sun flare that comes with it just to really show like, hey, there's something out of the frame, but it impacting the photo. I think that that is important to know, right? It's out of the frame, but it impacts the photo. And then the last thing is I threw a border. That's all the effects. Now, what you've seen earlier, this green... <laughs> This green thing over here is I went into my local adjustments and I made a few different local adjustments, All right? So uh, here, we'll turn them all off so you can see the buildup of them. So the photo, I, obviously, since the key light was coming from the left, really, really dark on the right hand side. Well, I wanted to make his eye pop. And I was like, well, that's not making it pop enough. So I did another pass on the eye 
And then that just looked weird, right? So I said, okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make it as if there was something reflective behind him to fill in the shadow that's behind him. And that's where this all defined the right side of Batman, right? And this is nothing more than me using a linear uh, mask. And I just drug it all the way out from the corner. Uh, really, really big pass here because I wanted to make it seem like a big light source. And I'll talk about creating light in a completely different live stream because I think it's important that we understand when and where we can create light in an image to really like drive in the story, right? Uh, and then the last thing, I wanted to clean up this little area right here. So I just exposed it a little bit more. There's nothing to this except for me literally dragging in another linear tool. Uh, very, very broad adjustments here. Nothing crazy. I don't think uh, this is like some award-winning photo, right? But it was a ton of fun to create. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of us as photographers, we need in our own workflows is the freedom to create something that doesn't have to be great, right? If I were to show you, you know, because those are just all the ones that I've gone through so far. But if I were to show you all of these photos, I was working on a focus stack of some glasses and then macro photography of a little bit of a, uh, of a pin tip, just messing around with my camera, right? Shot this bug. This was the shot that I decided to edit. Um, I was back shooting backlit. So overexposing for the back to see what I can get on the bug here, uh, shooting from the side just to see what depth of field I can get on such a small, uh, creature, you know, just really experimenting and it's important. You know, this doesn't really have much to do with fine art. Uh, I had really experimented uh, using SkySwap AI uh, to throw in the uh, the Aurora behind a basket of pumpkins. You know, just working on some fall stuff. And I said, you know, my wife, she has all of these decorations around the house. Why not grab those? Uh, I was grilling some burgers uh, earlier this week and decided to take a photo of the grill brush. The, there's a light on the back of my porch. Look, the point that I want to make is spend time using your camera uh, and just photograph whatever you want, right? Free yourself from saying, I have to make something great and just make something. And then make something great out of whatever it is that you just made. Uh, because when I sat down and I was like, I'm going to photograph the bush, I never thought that I was going to get this photo, right? Uh, most of this happened post-production. Here's another one. I never thought that I would get this photo. <laughs> Same bush, different uh, clump of leaves, if you will. Uh, but same bush, different clump of leaves. Here's another one that's more fine artists, uh, and it's abstract. The composition is what's impelling or compelling about this, right? You have this bright area that leads you down because you're like, well, there's not much going on here. Okay, there's something interesting here. Oh, what's, what's that? And then you follow the bright trail leading you down into this clump, and then there's more brightness, and there's this contrast between the really bright piece going into this faded gray piece. And then, you know, you, you start to follow this and it, it's like a design that leads you down and it's abstract, right? Could you make out that it's a bush? Probably. But when you look at it at first, you ask the question, what am I looking at? And that's what's so cool, right? There's this weird line that's coming through here. Well, that's a spider web. It's just blurred. <laughs> Right. Uh, and then 
here's something that's a little bit more intimate that I took uh, from the top down and decided to stand up and, and look down on the plant. Uh, and I threw in just some bokeh balls or bokeh lights, whatever you want to call these, uh, and did a very, very poor job of masking those around it, but it didn't matter, right? I was having fun. I was creating, and that's what I was really, uh, trying to do here. Uh, this photo is actually out of focus. <laughs> um, and it's, it's out of focus because I was trying to get the water drop here uh, in focus and then everything else. But instead, the focus kind of shifted to this leaf over here, which seems to be the most in focus, uh, and then even some of this area here. So uh, it, it's an out of focus image, but I appreciate it that the water drop was soft. I don't know why, but I enjoyed that. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think? Should the water droplet been more sharp or was it just what it needed to be? Um, here's a photo that I took yesterday and this one, it was hanging from this little bush plant uh, on the street. And I said, you know what? I'm going to photograph that because it's a contrast of reds against greens and I threw some color uh, adjustments on here and I made the greens more green and I made these reds a lot more red than what they were. Uh, and I actually cropped in on this image to make it a tighter frame centered around these three and I wanted this to be on, so if you were to cut this into thirds, right? Uh, one and then two. I wanted the flowers to be on the uh, right thirds, right two thirds. Yeah, sure. Right. So negative space to full space. This is composition. All right. I'm no composition genius, by the way. This is just the composition that I decided to use to make something uh, that I feel was compelling. Uh, you let me know what you think. And, you know, I could also just rotate this right now. That's a way different look than what we were just looking at. I don't like it, but that's something you could do. Experiment with your photography. We've already looked at the parking meter. This one, I really enjoy. Uh, this, this work, I was walking. Sorry. I was walking down the road and... Uh, this particular leaf just it was like hey look at me take a take a picture of me uh and so i did this in two different treatments i did a color uh treatment and i did the black and white treatment i don't know which one is my favorite out of the two but i really enjoyed the photo i enjoyed creating the photo i enjoyed editing the photo uh and then the last one from this week is this little bug. Uh, again, I was outside grilling. The bug was on the uh, little net that we have on our patio. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to take a picture of something that I normally wouldn't, wouldn't really uh, take a photo of. And it looks so unique, right? There's the grid of this particular and i don't think that this is fine art right uh, i will not pass this as fine art i will pass this as interesting though the bug itself is symmetrical right there's equal amount of legs on each side the antennas if you were to split the bug down the middle there's symmetry here symmetry there so it's interesting i put it on the bottom third uh inner or the number four uh, intersecting point. I don't know what we call these things. Anyway, put it there. And I said, okay, I'm going to just go ahead and expose for the background. Or I'm sorry, expose for the back of the bug. And I lowered the exposure in post of the background. Just so you can see, like, there's some greenery back there. And... Uh, 
Yeah. I don't know what this was because it's all trees back here. So it should have all been green. Oh, that's the sky. It was a cloudy day. That's what it was. So, um, I hope that, that, that helps, right? I hope that helps. So, there you have it. Uh, the, 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 the fine art, uh, style, which very, very subjective. Hopefully, you know, what I shared is at least helpful enough for anyone who is looking to get into fine art to just like say, you know what, I'm going to try something and it, it's not going to be for everyone. That's the thing about art. What you do as an artist may not be accepted by every single person and that's okay. We don't want to be accepted by every single person. I think that that's a, a terrible uh, way of looking at your art. Like, I want everyone to like me. I want everyone to love what I do. Uh, it's unhealthy. Because, like, I don't like mayonnaise. But there's a lot of people who like mayonnaise. If someone who cooks or, you know, makes burgers, sandwiches, and they put mayonnaise on it, and they feed it to me, I'm not going to like it. All right? But if they fed it to someone who enjoys mayonnaise, then they're going to enjoy it. The point that I'm making here is you're going to have to find the people who have the same taste as you. And that may be a little bit more of a challenge. Just because people don't like your work doesn't mean that your work is bad. That just means that that's not for them. But there's always, always one thing that I've learned in photography. There are people who will appreciate what it is that you create. So create what you love. And find people who love what you create. It's that simple. Yep. Nothing uh, super profound about that. Just super easy. All right. Hopefully this was a helpful uh, walkthrough of creating some uh, f fine art photography using Almond Photo Raw. If it was, go ahead and smash the like button. It just helps YouTube share this with other people. If you're watching this on the restream or the replay, leave a comment down below. Let me know what it is that you want to know about fine art photography, uh, and I will do my best to answer. I am no genius. Uh, in fact, I haven't even sold a fine art photo. Uh, I've given some away, uh, or I've given photos away to people who are like, hey, you know, I'd really like to hang this up. All right, cool. Here you go. You know? Uh, but have I ever like made any money off of it? No, um, that's not, that's not how it worked for me, but maybe it could work for you. So let me know what your thoughts are on fine art photography using all one photo raw and yeah. So, uh, don't forget to go to the website for free. You can sign up, join, log in, uh, very soon. There's going to be courses on there and there's going to be free downloads, all kinds of stuff. All right. But it's all going to be going through the website. So please get into the website. I'm going to be uh, pushing that to, you know, in, in all the videos that I do. So uh, and then the podcast, I plan to get the podcast up and running again. Uh, I was supposed to do a 15 minute drill, but you can hear like the reason that I'm struggling through this live stream is the reason that I did not do the podcast because I feel like that just would not have been beneficial for anyone. So uh, I'll leave it at that. But thank you guys, uh, everyone who tuned in, got some of the greatest supporters and subscribers. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.